So my single room heat recovery video is just two weeks old now, but whilst I continue to work on the kitchen seating project, some really interesting things have happened since I did this video, which I thought justified another quick update today. Firstly, it was pointed out to me that with that metal duct, I'd created a massive coal bridging issue and arguably negated much of the benefits that come with the heat recovery element in this fan. Secondly, there's been a lot of chat about the efficiency of this fan, whether the heat recovery is any good, whether the cost is justified, and what benefits, if any, it brings to air quality in the house. I'll be talking about that in a minute, and I want to thank, in particular, 10 square meter workshop for all his considerable comments on this since I posted the video. But let's start off with that metal duct. You might remember me saying in the last video I'd stupidly installed the duct before realising there was a telescopic plastic duct included with the kit. But by the time I realised this, the metal duct was foamed in and fully taped to the Intello membrane behind the plasterboard. So I decided to leave it in place. But loads of you waded in to say this was creating an almost perfect cold bridge, aka a super highway, for cold to get into the house. Evident in my thermal imaging shots and arguably removing most of the benefits of the fan's heat recovery. Not to mentioned providing a potential magnet for condensation and mould. So I decided to set an example and do this properly. And the guys on my Discord channel also thought this was a good idea. The fan capsule itself is designed to be easily removable so you can clean the air filters. More on those a bit later. Four screws out and the front cover was off. With the electrics isolated I could disconnect, unscrew the inner wall fixture part and remove it and then remove part of that telescopic pipe that I've been able to slot into my metal duct. Then it was off with the outer hood and outer wall fixture part. Then with an Ulfa knife I had to buy a new one last week as I've mislaid my old one. I cut away the tape that attached the Intello membrane to the metal pipe. Then with an old carving knife that I used to cut insulation, I sliced away at the expanding foam that I'd sprayed between the brickwork and the pipe. It was such a snug fit and took me quite a while to remove the metal duct, but eventually it did come out, with the help of the wooden block and a bit of brute force and perseverance. I then removed the remaining Tescon Varna tape that I'd used on my internal wall insulation project, there's a link to that on screen now, from around the membrane, before installing a new layer all the way around the opening. Now the slight issue I have with that telescopic pipe is I don't want cold air and moisture getting in between the two layers of pipe and into the internal parts of the wall behind the intelligent vapour barrier. So I decided to silicon the two sections together to prevent this happening. I measured the exact length of the duct taking into account the 10mm projection on the outside and inside walls and siliconed the pipework to the exact width, tidying up the joint with my Kramer profiling tool and left it 24 hours to set. Then it was in with a new plastic tube and I used the same technique as before pushing it through the layer of tape I had prepared and then peeling off the backing to stick the tape to the tube, leaving the tube perfectly sealed to the Intello membrane beneath. I then sealed the tube into the brickwork with more of that Sudar window and door frame SWS expanding foam, giving everything a good clean with foam and gun cleaner spray before trimming away the excess when the foam had set. I could then reattach the outer wall fixture part and hood. And I think we can agree that's a big improvement. I could then reconnect the electrics to the inner wall fixture part followed by the inner cover piece and fan capsule. So as we listen to the fan swapping over from supply to exhaust mode, something I didn't film in the last video, and I reckon there's about a five second gap between each cycle, this being something people were asking about. Has putting in that plastic ducting led to any noticeable improvements? So I've run another thermal imaging test, this time with an external air temperature of 11 degrees. It was 14 last time. The original thermal imaging is on the right, and I'm sorry it's shaky, I couldn't get a tripod up there at the time. I think it's fair to say, particularly given it's colder now, the blue ring around the edge that signified the cold bridging caused by the metal pipe is a lot less pronounced, and indeed a couple of degrees warmer. This, when heat recovery in my original test, was shown to be running at about 50% is an important improvement. Also, interestingly, in the exhaust phase, the core appears to be a degree warmer. The temperature in the kitchen hasn't changed, I should point out, between the two tests. And in the supply phase, again, the ceramic core is operating more efficiently, more than a degree warmer than it was in the original tests. So that's a degree warmer at the core, even with a three degree reduction in temperature outside. 
I reckon that's about 54.5% heat recovery, better than before but still substantially lower than the up to 90% thermal efficiency figures that they claim. So I'm glad I swapped out that duct and thank you all for gently suggesting that that was what I needed to do. Indeed, 10 square metre workshop pointed out that swapping the duct would save more heat than the unit which is a nice seg into the next and final section of this video. I'm gonna use the rest of this video to talk about some of the comments that you've made about this and mechanical extract ventilation generally, to try and draw some conclusions about whether the Zephyr or one of the other DMEVs on the market are worth purchasing. Now, 10 square meter workshop, previously a consulting engineer whose job was to basically appraise a design before it went to market, has properly gone to town on this unit after watching my video. He's not only contributed considerably, but he's also joined lots of other comment threads. So massive thanks to you for doing that. And also everyone else who's got involved because it's because of you guys that I'm able to do this section of the video. Now he's run the numbers and making some temperature assumptions that are on screen now, reckons it would take a hundred years for the energy savings to pay for this unit. He also goes on to point out that the reticulated foam filter is designed to protect the ceramic core from dust, not to protect us and to make our air quality better. Even worse than that, the problem with this unit in the extract phase, obviously it's sucking dust into the filter, but then in the supply phase, that dust that's been pegged into the filter is then being pushed back into the air. He's also deeply suspicious of the power requirements of this unit which is 3.5 watts in fan speed to the speed that I've got it on, which is considerably less than the care unit. Nine watts in trickle and 46 watts in boost. He also made the point that the heat recovery claims of this unit, i.e. up to 90%, are wild, particularly when, as you saw in my last video, my system was saving about 40 to 45% of the heat. And that was with a 14 degree external temperature. So who knows where they get these figures from. Care are also saying they can get up to 86%. This seems suspiciously close to the figures that the centralized MVHR systems can actually achieve. But when the temperature outside here drops to about zero, I'll run another test and paste a short on it with the actual results. Because as Alex82 said, thank you Alex for that, 14 degrees doesn't really show much heat recovery. To really test this, you need to have a temperature of between five and zero. So sticking with DMEVs for a bit longer, what other options have we got? Well, we've got the CARE, which Andy Mack has since updated to say it's fixed the damp and mold problems he had, albeit in his low occupancy outdoor studio. At Furtron spotted there's the Ventaxia Tempera P. Ventaxia also do this one. Again, note those pretty wild heat recovery claims. Blauberg have the Vento, and then there's this beast from Envirovent. A much more realistic boast of 75% heat recovery on the thermal efficiency, and like the care, simultaneous extraction and heat recovery. Now, I wouldn't want this system on my wall. Hubs has got one, reckons it 60 to 70% efficient. Well, that's better than mine. And I do like the idea of a proper cross-flow heat exchanger. So bottom line, the DMFs have their downsides, both in terms of heat recovery, but also air chains, where again, he says you'd need two to three running flat out in a hermetically sealed house to meet minimum requirements. Although what are these standards? Recommendations range from 0.35 air changes per hour right up to six. And these recommendations take no account of occupancy, size of building, or other factors. And this is one of the reasons this subject is so hard to navigate and is so contentious. So I would say if you can go centralized MVHR, it's far superior with heat exchange efficiency ranging from 70 to a whopping 95% and air filtering and circulation blowing what DMEVs can do out of the water. I did do a bit of a disservice to the retrofit lobby by suggesting MVHR isn't practical for old properties because you pointed out it definitely feasible for bungalows. Whereas John Hunter pointed out the ducting can be quite easily installed in the loft space. And also you can retrofit MVHR to houses that have ducted extraction. So I was talking to Sam on my Discord forum about doing this second video and he said, Charlie, it's too big a topic. What are you going to do? Re-educate all homeowners on physics? Well, fat chance of that because my grasp of physics isn't exactly fantastic. And you could ask the question, why bother putting in the BSK Zephyr when the small amount of air in the supply phase coming into the room isn't going to completely transform air circulation in the house? This is why 10 square metre workshop says, in his opinion, you shouldn't bother with DMEVs and just put in a simple extractor fan. 
Now you can't deny the fact that since I installed the DMEV, the relative humidity in the kitchen has plummeted, leading to an improvement of 14%. Thanks TJP for correcting my maths on that. I told you I wasn't very good at maths and physics. And in fact, since then it's plunged again. It's now 41, 42% in this room. A room which used to be so stuffy, I'd have to open the Velux or the door or one of the windows. And I have to say, I haven't felt any stuffiness in here since we installed the fan. But even those improvements, you could argue, would have been achieved with an extractor fan running in tandem with the Velux Active window opening. Still, Killian has three Zephyrs in his poorly insulated 1990s three bed semi in Ireland. He says it's definitely helped with air quality, humidity and winter window condensation, although it hasn't eradicated the condensation. Well, Killian, if your place is anything like mine, with the single windows I've got here, you're never gonna eradicate that condensation until you swap out those windows for double or triple glaze. So what conclusions can we draw from all this? Well, yes, it would take 100 years to pay back the cost of this unit in energy savings. And in fact, if you look at the underfloor heating system we've got in here, with the amount that cost, I think the Roman Empire wasn't around for long enough to pay back the costs of that. However, it's absolutely transformed the entire house, basically. We love living in this room. Temperature in here is consistently two degrees higher than the temperature we set the boiler to kick in at. And having that great big thermal mass below the floor has literally transformed the thermal footprint of this house. So much so that our log burner is now pretty much redundant. And we've still got one room to do downstairs. And this links into my final point. In my last condensation update video, I made the point that if you combine a hygrometer so that then you finally know what your relative humidity levels are in your house, with a shift in mindset and a few changes in your lifestyle, you will not fail to radically improve the air quality in your house and massively reduce those damp mold and condensation problems. I suppose the question is, do you just want to take the steps I outlined in that video, getting the decent ventilation of an extractor hoods, not hanging washing inside, opening the window, purging the air every so often? Or do you want to bring something new in with the DMEV type system? It was easy for me to install it because I was intrigued, I was fascinated about technology, and I wanted to experiment with it to let you know what I thought. The difficult thing for you to decide is whether exhaust ventilation is adequate or whether you want the additional supply of fresh air into your house through pairing up a few of these systems. Notwithstanding the problems you've got with your place like this not being hermetically sealed. And the alternative would obviously be a PIV which have had universal acclaim in the comments section below all the videos where I've talked about them. Although a few people have started saying recently they are not a perfect solution given how they can shove that moisture inside walls if you don't have a way to make it escape. So that is the point. Whatever you do, it has to be done in the context of a holistic strategy for your house. No one thing fixes the issue, a bit like external wall insulation. Even with that, which is the gold standard for insulating a property, you still need to have a ventilation strategy to make sure that all the moisture inside your house can get out. So anyway, let's not stop the conversation here. Let me know your thoughts as you always do in the comment section below this video because it's so valuable for continuing the discussion and educating all of us in deciding what we need to do. And if you're new to my channel, it would mean so much to me to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here and don't forget to click the bell notification icon so you get notified of all my future uploads. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.